it has been a long time since I've sat in front of a camera, so hopefully this goes smooth, my audio and uh, lighting all looks good. If you guys are new to this channel, what's up? My name is Jack. I'm an automotive cinematographer and photographer. You got your camera, you're really into cars, and you want to find out how to take rolling shots like these. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about any of my cinematography stuff that you see on my page. We can probably do that in a later video or tutorial if you guys end up liking this one. This is going to strictly focus on photography and how to take rolling shots, tips, tricks, gear, settings, all of that. So the first thing I want to talk about when taking rolling shots is general safety. Now I'm pretty sure every camera comes with a camera strap. I highly recommend using one of these. Um, wrap it around your wrist or whatever when you're hanging out the window or the sliding door when you're taking these shots so you don't drop your camera and end up having to pay a lot of money. I have definitely heard some horror stories of people taking rollers with no strap that drop their uh, cameras. I'm at fault for this. I don't always use a camera strap when I really should, so don't be like me, use a camera strap. You also want to make sure that you are communicating very well with the person you are taking the rolling shots of, whether that be hand movements, telling them to come closer, move back, do whatever it is you need to do. Make sure that you're always communicating back and forth however you can. For the speed, you don't have to be going 150 miles an hour down the road to be able to get a nice roller. Obviously, be as safe as you can when you're taking these shots, um, hanging out the window, or a van is even the best in my opinion with the sliding door and all the space in the back. Make sure you're strapped in, make sure you're not, you know, doing anything to harm yourself or anybody else on the road when you're doing stuff like this. Now let's go over some of the gear that I use to get these shots. Um, first off, I highly recommend getting a zoom lens if you don't have one already. If you need to change your focal length on the go right there when you're taking the shots, you could do that. Personally, I think anything from a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70 is your best bet when taking rolling shots. Dude, the lighting just changed so much. The 24 to 70 is definitely a great lens for absolutely everything, I feel like, in my opinion. The next piece of gear I highly recommend using is a variable and D filter. I will explain why when we get to the settings, but this is one by Genus Tech. It's both a variable ND and circular polarizer in one. Using one of these in harsh daylight will significantly reduce the amount of sunlight that is on whatever subject you're shooting um, and just totally act like sunglasses for your camera. If there's way too much light coming in and you want to use a lower shutter speed, this will help you out a ton. Um, highly recommend getting a variable ND either by Genus Tech Freewell makes really good ones. I used a Freewell for a lot of my shots. This is going to help you out a ton, especially when you're using a low shutter speed. Finally, let's talk about settings and what to set your camera at when taking these photos. I'll probably throw a few clips of the camera screen on here as well so you can see uh, the settings and how I change them. When you are shooting rolling shots, you might think it is important to have a really high shutter speed because you want to freeze everything in the frame. Um, that is not true. I'm talking about using a shutter of 1 15th to 1 50th of a second or higher if you're going even faster. Typically, a rule of thumb I like to go by is whatever your speed you're going, you can try to match your speed to um, the shutter speed that you want to use. So say if you're going 40 miles an hour, you can try 1 40th of a shutter or 1 30th of a shutter. That seemed to work for me. To get the smoothest looking rollers though, I totally think that the lower the shutter speed, the more smooth, the more crazy the shot's gonna look. So try sticking with a low shutter speed anywhere from 1 15th to 1 30th, 1 40th of a second. That'll probably work out the best. The lower you set your shutter speed, the smoother the road is gonna look. Keep that in mind when setting the shutter speed. Next is aperture. Now, we're not really worried about depth of field here when you're taking shots of a car moving. You wanna make sure that the shot is in focus. Personally, I found anywhere from f6 to f11 can work. You don't need a super low aperture and you wanna stay away from that to make sure that you get everything in focus. When you're setting your ISO, you typically wanna keep it as low as possible. That way you avoid any unnecessary noise that can go into your image. However, if you're shooting rollers at night, you might be tempted to crank the ISO a little bit. That's okay, just watch out for the noise. I recommend keeping it as low as you possibly can. Now you might be thinking, okay, settings are good, gear's good. I got general idea of how to do this, but how do I get the car in focus? I like keeping it in AFC or autofocus continuous. I think that's what it stands for. When using the continuous autofocus, you can set your drive mode really high or it's like high plus, I think is what the setting is called. And that lets you hold your finger on the shutter and fire off a ton of shots at once. It'll just constantly shoot. The focus area I've kept on wide most of the time and it seemed to be fine for me. I've heard people also use flexible spot where they can go ahead and like pinpoint where they want their focus area to be 
and that seems to work really well. As far as the white balance goes, I'm not too concerned about it. I leave it in auto because I shoot all my photos in RAW. I highly recommend shooting in RAW over JPEG. That way you can change the white balance to whatever you want. When you shoot in JPEG, it makes it a lot harder and there's a lot less information to work with when you jump into Lightroom. I think that about wraps up all my tips and tricks for shooting rollers. Um, hopefully I didn't forget anything. If you guys did learn something from this video, be sure to leave a like, comment what you guys wanna see next. I definitely have some more automotive features coming to the channel soon. If this video ends up doing well, I could even make a part two of editing the photos or taking you guys on behind the scenes for the video shoots that I do, if that's something you're interested in. So definitely be sure to let me know in the comments what you think, uh, how everything looks. It's my first time doing this in a really, really long time. I'm usually behind the camera. So if you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment, be sure to subscribe. I appreciate it a lot. Peace. But this is a variable ND filter. I can't even get this open.